Welcome, it's the Close the Deal Show. I'm your host, Terrence McCray. Every week we bring you information as well as business information, insight and tips from entrepreneurs, business professionals, and inspired individuals from the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond. The Close the Deal Show also addresses features regarding public announcement, Entrepreneur Week, and best businesses going on in San Francisco. But this week, we're going to talk about a nonprofit organization. And if you're looking for strategies to help you in business, then you're in the right place. Thank you for joining us today. But most importantly, please welcome our guest and good friend who has not only been on this show once, but loves to come back and share the good work that he's doing in the community. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from San Francisco Impact Partners, nonprofit, Mr. Sean Hanks. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you again for having me on the show. Absolutely. So, Sean, um, could you please tell the viewers, you know, more about your organization and what you're doing right now? Well, at San Francisco Impact Partners, we are excited to work on issues around poverty and homelessness here in San Francisco. Uh, we have organized a lot of activities over the course of this year. We had a great time at San Francisco Pride. I happen to be an honoree in this year's Pride. We marched down uh, Market Street and uh, promoted not only me being honored uh, as a Heritage of Pride awardee winner, but uh, my nonprofit organization as well. We, we were able to give out a number of care packages on Pride Saturday at a St. John's Episcopal Church in the Mission area, and we are organizing similar care package uh, for the holidays. Okay, so recently, when you decided to do this, what brought about this opportunity? Um, creating this nonprofit organization was um, an inspired uh, event. Um, it took several years of my own experiences with poverty and homelessness and then my own interests in doing something to not only support myself but to support others who've been in poverty and in homelessness uh, before and so I met people all across San Francisco and a lot of nonprofit organizations to find out what it was they were doing and to think about what it is I wanted to do to support our our homeless community in San Francisco and so I came up with a lot of great ideas and strategies and um, a lot of people are excited to work with me on them. So can you talk about what this program not only offers but ideally what it entails that you see yourself solving this problem with um, homelessness. Yes, so for the holiday season, I and other organizations will be organizing care package uh, drives. We're doing this in the Castro, we're doing it in the Mission, and we're doing it in the Bayview. Uh, we're organizing uh, supportive resource uh, information guides and these hygiene kits uh, that will help people who are on our streets. Um, in the Castro on Christmas Eve, we'll be there in the evening providing some meals and some some drink and community will also be providing the opportunity for people to get access to care packages. Our friends will be in Harvey Milk Plaza and I will be in Jane Warner Plaza also accepting donations of backpacks and luggage and blankets as to support our homeless population. In the mission, we'll be at St. John's uh, Episcopal Church with the Gubio Project a little bit earlier that day, giving out some of the same care packages. And in the Bayview on the 21st with Mother Brown's um, United Services uh, hum uh, Human Council will be hosting its annual holiday dinner. And so we'll be organizing care packages for the community there. In each of these places, we're going to be surveying as best possible. Um, this is, you know, completely at will for anybody to uh, answer questions. We, we want to find out uh, from the homeless community if they feel that they are prepared to uh, work a job, if we can support them with the appropriate resources, if they could volunteer to get some stipend, uh, you know, a small little check that, to help them out. And if they are, uh, if they need uh, resources like storage. Um, one of our big projects is to support people with supportive infrastructure and at the top of that list that is storage and so uh, we're going to be working on some workforce job fairs to really illustrate what supportive infrastructure means and so consider that 
if you live on the streets and you have a tent, you know, you may be having a fear that that tent is going to be taken away if you were to leave it for a significant amount of time. So people who are living on our streets may not feel comfortable going to job fairs or working a job or any things of those natures if they know they don't have a place to put their belongings. So we are working diligently gently on organizing the supportive infrastructure to give them a place to put their belongings so that they can focus on getting jobs and training, health services, and everything else that they need to come out of poverty and homelessness. We believe that this is going to be one of the essential tools to help us accomplish that. I have a two-part question. First question is, who created this survey mm -hmm. in regards to the questions you're going to be asking the people in the community that are homeless. Who created this survey? So I created this survey. We're starting with a very simple one, those three questions that I posed. Um, you know, if people feel that they are ready to work a job, if we can provide them with supportive resources, if people feel that they could, um, you know, volunteer, if the volunteer opportunity comes with a stipend, we want to support people with both a little change in their pocket, but maybe something to eat as well, um, pairing it with other resource providers who can help them out with things like access to showers and access to laundry so that they can uh, feel professional and neat and prepared to work. We also want to make sure that people um, can um, be aware when they're homeless that they do have the right and privilege to vote. And so I spoke earlier this year with the Department of Elections and asked them to create a information sheet that explains explicitly that. that if you do not have a permanent mailing address, you can still be registered and vote, and you can vote on issues that impact everyone in San Francisco, and you can also vote on the local representative wherever you feel like is the area that you want to call home. Now, besides the basic necessities that you're helping provide the homeless with, what about drug use and what about mental health um, stability? in regards to their condition. Are you providing those outlets as well? So at the Supportive Resource and Job Fair, we're going to have uh, lots of partners and partners who can help us who are educated in these areas. And so at the Job Fair, we are going to have the Supportive Resource uh, opportunities where people can store their belongings. We hope to have partners who can help prepare people with giving them access to showers and laundry so that they can feel comfortable with their belongings secure and spend the whole day talking to medical practitioners, talking to mental health service providers, talking to potential employers, and talking to organizations that they could volunteer at if it comes with a stipend opportunity, and everything else that we can imagine to support our homeless population in addressing all of their various concerns and an environment that they feel comfortable and fully supported. Well, strategically, it sounds like you've been closing a lot of deals with a lot of partners. But could you allow the viewers to get a full understanding about your background that brought you about getting involved in helping the homeless? Absolutely. Um, as you know from the last time I was on the show that I'm a San Francisco native. I was born here at General Hospital. Um, I've had a great opportunity to have lived in the majority of the districts in San Francisco. We have 11 of them and I have lived in nine of them and worked in the other two. So uh, as a resident and as somebody who's experienced poverty and homelessness, I uh, lived in multiple districts where that had occurred in my life. So so uh, for our folks who are in the mission, I know what it's like to couch surf in that area and to look for resources there. For our folks who are in downtown, I know what it's like to be in that area and look for resources and so forth and so on in other parts of San Francisco where there is a, a high degree of poverty and homelessness. And so we are focusing uh, um, with these care package events on the three communities that we talked about in the mission. Uh, there's a significant population of people who are homeless that need additional resources, such as the ones that we're talking about. There is a population in the Bayview's Hunters Point, and most people know in the Bayview's Hunters Point, our homeless population and situations are underreported and so 
we know that talking to our providers and our friends out there, that there is at least about 3,000 people in that area alone. That's in contrast to the District 6 downtown area where we feel like there's about 6,000. What's reported by the city is that we have about 7,000 people who are in poverty and homelessness. But I understand that, you know, from other people who operate in this arena, that you kind of have to times that by three to really feel that we're getting an um, appropriate value. I mean, people who are homeless include people who are living on their streets, but also people who do, don't have a permanent home, who may be living in their uh, cars or in their RVs or couch surfing. And so homeless really uh, encompasses a wide spectrum of people, and we need to be able to provide resources to that entire spectrum. So how will you create the ability for a homeless person to store property? Like, where are you going to find a place where you actually have a facility mm -hmm. where you can store a homeless property? Because all the time I see public workers with local law enforcement removing people's property off the streets. Yes, and that is a situation that I want to help the city to turn around. The city um, in a nonprofit or organization that I'm aware of and that I learned of that from the Coalition on Homelessness when I engaged them and some of their members there is where I learned that we only had in existence one place that you could go and store your belongings and that you could not fit a stroller in it and that perhaps you could fit a couple of duffel bags and so there were only 480 positions that people could um, occupy within that space and so based on that I started to get to work and having conversations about how I could implement a program that we could apply across the whole city. Uh, poverty and homelessness is impacting each and every district of San Francisco in different ways, and it is our goal to build supportive infrastructure in each and every district to supply the access to storage where people are living. These are their communities, and this is where they feel comfortable and safe, so we want to have um, at some of these events and at our workforce fairs or, or across uh, 2019 demonstration of what we mean by supportive resource infrastructure. You know, sometimes people in our communities, people who have not experienced hardship, um, may not necessarily feel comfortable with homeless service providers coming into their community. And so to address their concerns, we want to do it in a demonstration mode uh, uh, introductorily. So at these workforce fairs in key communities across San Francisco, we will have a job fair where people um, who need the resources can come and feel comfortable, but also it'll be somewhere public where people who don't need these resources will have been walked by and see what it looks like and see that it is not scary um, and then it's going to become a resource that they believe is going to be one of our most valuable tools in addressing the situation and so um, we may also work with some of our friends who are, are organizing fairs in San Francisco um, you know we have Sunday streets which is uh, a large community fair in districts across San Francisco, and I would love to be able to work with them to be able to demonstrate this there. You know, it's basically going to be a retrofitted container in which uh, we will have people staffed, we'll have security to make sure that everyone's belongings are safe and that people who come um, know that it's a, a secured environment, and we will have somebody who will operate as a facilitator to, you know, help people triage their situation, um, direct them to other resources, provide them with uh, some of the other resources that we talked about earlier in terms of backpacks and luggage. You know, people who are on our streets who may not have money, uh, we need to begin to provide them with a way to consolidate their belongings. So you talked about uh, DPW who comes and takes their belonging. I would love to have a partnership with that organization to say, instead of taking their belongings, direct them to our facility where we can support them better. We want to be able to give them these tools to consolidate their belongings and give them a safe and secure place to put their stuff. So will you create a profile of each person that you come in contact with? Because you're talking about over nine to maybe 10,000 homeless people that are here in San Francisco. So yes. are you going to have like um, a file of each person that you do a survey of in order to know whether or not this person is serious or is this person um, misusing the resources and opportunities that your program is offering in order to determine 
who wants the program over who does it? Yes, that's why we are starting with these care package give out opportunities. That's the first place and time that we'll get to talk to people to find out whether or not they feel like this is something that they want or need and if they have an interest in those stipend opportunities or job opportunities then we are determining who is saying that they're interested we'll also make sure as we are surveying people the people who want to select into the survey uh, to make sure that you know we're, we don't want to create a situation where there can be an abuse of this important resource so you know we are going to make sure that we're providing it to people who definitely need this resource and we have a lot of people who are on our streets and are experiencing hard times and everybody who is in that category most likely wants to come out of it I don't believe that anybody actually wants to live on our streets but I believe that as a society we have not had all of the good resources in and available to people in the way that they can access it like I said the first time I came on to your show I had fallen through a lot of the loopholes in our society and so based on that experience I've worked to begin to close those gaps so what one particular loophole did you follow through on well I know that you know people like Kamala Harris are talking about um, a guaranteed income or an amount of money that can come back to them to support them. I know that social services like general assistance, um, that if you are living on our streets that you only have access to uh, $66 in um, financial support. And, but if you can say that you have a place that you're living that you get $476. And so for the people who can only get access to about $66, resources like the ones that I'm planning to put together will become economically accessible. In contrast, a market rate uh, storage container or facility, uh, I use one for my nonprofit to store all of our extra goods and resources, that's running about $140 a month. So $66 has already broken your bank if that's what you're receiving from general assistance. So, you know, I organize these resources and as we begin to implement them, we want to get it down to something that works for them. And so they would have a safe and secure place month by month to put their belongings for far less than um, $66 a month. We haven't set prices yet, but we will after we do our demonstration in community, but it will probably be something under $10 a month. Sounds good. So tell me, you do have a special announcement you would like to make, is oh. that correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the first time and opportunity that I get to really talk about this publicly. Uh, for some people who have known me for some time, they know that in addition to working with in the community on all the issues that affect our society, that I support our community from the political perspective. I've run for positions in our Democratic Party, and as I've talked about, my experiences being impoverished and being homeless and dealing with issues of workplace discrimination and the racism that we're seeing in our society and everything else that everybody works so diligently to help resolve. I have uh, run multiple times for positions in our Democratic Party, both at the state level, but representing San Francisco on its east side. Um, and I have run for positions on the west side. Uh, I'm running now and excited to announce that I'm running for Assembly District Delegate. This is a small opportunity for me and seven uh, or six men and seven women, a total of 14 in each Assembly District in California to run to represent our community. And together with those individuals for the, our Assembly District, we get to organize an engagement of our community to work on a platform that we can introduce into the state party platform. I believe that it would be amazingly valuable if we had representation of people who have gone through real life hardships within our Democratic Party leadership. So we are looking at amazing stars uh, like some of our newly elected representatives who are really now talking about the hardships of having been waiters and waitresses and having not made a lot of money and oh my god I until I get my congressional salary I can't afford to pay rent in New York and so we need to have representation across the spectrum in our Democratic Party in each of our 
uh, states across the Union of people who know these experiences firsthand. I believe that those conversations that we have as Democrats will become much more inclusive and in that the direction we can take our policy will help to uplift everybody. And so I'm excited to announce that here and to sort of kick off my campaign as we lead into January. Um, the opportunity uh, for people who are interested and want to make use of their right to vote for the people who will represent them is coming up soon. And that is going to be on January 12th, um, starting at 10 a.m. at the Women's Building here in San Francisco in the Mission District. So my question to you is, what got you involved in the Democratic Party? I got involved in the Democratic Party at somebody spoke to me and inspired me and said that the energy that I was giving them made them feel like I was somebody like a Martin Luther King. I don't believe I'm Martin Luther King myself, but I believe that anybody who feels that, and he's not the only one who has said similar things like that to me, that one ought to do something with that energy. And so years since, I had organized myself to be in a position to work with our community, to listen to their interests, their concerns, their ideas, and to begin to use their voice and speak with them in chorus to present that to Democrats all across San Francisco and in our state leadership. And so uh, speaking with people who are m other minorities or immigrants or women or trans or um, from our most impoverished communities, they know that I re represent them because I have continued to come to all the events that uh, represent us being stronger by working together. So why should people consider voting for you, Sean? Well, I hope that people will consider voting for me, um, knowing that I'm out there every day uh, fighting the good fight, standing by their side. They should, if they believe that they want somebody who has experienced real life hardships and disparities, they should know, if um, they haven't heard already, that through my personal challenge and difficulties, I have never given up. Uh, you know, I, the first time I ran for assembly delegate in 2015, I was um, under threat of eviction myself. So, you know, coming into a situation where I might have become homeless and, you know, I was able to serve a partial term, so this is a re-election for me. And I wanted to be honest with the people who voted for me because I was displaced from my housing at that time and unfortunately had to move outside of the boundaries of the district that I was elected to serve, that I had to acquiesce the role and say, uh, you know, uh, while I would love to continue serving as a, a district delegate, but I'm no longer living in this district and I don't want people um, to, you know, think something bad about me for falsely representing them. And so I'm in a wonderful place now where we've organized a lot of resources for our community with my nonprofit and got a great job and um, back at the game. I never really left and uh, continued to organize in support of our community within the Democratic Party as an associate member of a Democratic club that I founded in 2016 called San Francisco Black Community Matters. So I've been able to keep my ears to the ground in terms of what's going on in our local Democratic Party with our Democratic Party clubs and uh, what's going on at the state and national level. And again, like some of our blazing stars th that were successful and the ones that weren't, I want to bring a real life experience, people with real hardships, so that everybody else who has those experiences will feel like they have a seat at the table in our platform. And I have a goal of engaging these communities um, those, they're at the top of my list in finding out more from them what they would like to see as part of their platform within our Democratic Party and who else they would like to see with some of these same values and experience in our leadership. Well, Sean, not only do I want to thank you for coming on the show, but I want to thank you most importantly for the good work that you're doing in the community. You're creating a change with a social impact that changes lives. You're making a difference. It's men like you that inspire other men to be want to come and do right and do better. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for all of your support in, you know, uplifting me so that we together can uplift more.
Absolutely. Before we close this deal, we would love to hear from you. If you have suggestions, questions, or if you would like to be a guest on The Close The Deal Show, please contact us at www.theclosethedealshow.com. San Francisco Bay Area viewers, every Monday night you can watch us on Cable Comcast on Channel 29. You can streamline us at 8.30 as well on your internet. So, worldwide, you can find us on the YouTube channel. Just type my name, Terrence McRae, click my picture. Please subscribe and make a comment as well as on your favorite episode. Take good care, everyone. Don't forget, find the right connection and close the deal.